Hey everyone, welcome to a, another Course of Sport video. This is uh, a new series that I'm going to be working on here, um, and this is going to be the first video in a long list of videos that go over more of the basics and fundamentals of driving a go-kart fast, basically. Um, a lot of the stuff that we talk about in some of the more in-depth videos can get pretty technical, and it can, you know, there can be some some lingo or some stuff maybe that you don't fully understand so this series is more meant to give you an idea um, of the basics of the fundamentals you kinda need um, and that'll give you a good base to jump off of and start uh, diving in deeper and, and learning more uh, in depth some of the more advanced techniques when it comes to driving a go-kart fast um, so let's get into it this first video is gonna kinda go over some basics about the racing line. Um, we're going to talk about um, different types of apexes, what an apex actually is if you don't know what that is. Um, we're going to go over some specific things that kart driving requires that might be different from other forms of motorsport um, like car racing, things with suspensions and stuff like that, um, and kind of the dynamics of how a kart works and what that requires from a driving point of view. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, optimizing corners and sections and things like that to get the best lap time out of it so you're not just focused on a single corner. Um, so let's start off by taking a look at apexes and what those are and the different kind of apexes that you can choose for a specific given corner. Um, so the first one that we have here on the left is uh, a middle apex or a medium apex, just kind of your standard way that you would take the corner. You can see down here the four wheels is the cart, the arrow is the line that we're talking about through the corner. So we've got a hairpin corner here and you can see the line represents the outside wheels on this cart and as you come through the corner here the middle apex is going to be where you apex the corner right in the center. Um, and to elaborate on what an apex is, if you don't know what that is, to get to the very basics, an apex is where you are coming closest to the inside of the corner. Um, so that's going to be where you know you get closest to that inside white line or that inside curb, and where that's happening in relation to the corner. Um, and that's kind of how we define what the different apexes are. So the first one is just a middle medium apex, um, and this is typically going to be like a smoother arc coming through the corner. You're getting closest to the apex right in the middle here. Um, and it's kind of a middle ground uh, in terms of entry and exit speed and how much speed you carry through the corner. Um, so our goal when driving is always to take the shortest route we can through the corner while maintaining speed. Um, and that's why, obviously, we're starting on the outside of the track in this diagram here. And we're swinging it in and cutting the corner real tight at one point and then swinging it back out. It's going to allow us to hold the momentum around the corner, and it's going to allow us to take the shortest route possible through the corner, um, as opposed to driving way out here on the outside of the corner. Um, so the whole point of choosing how you're going to apex a corner is you're trying to determine how you're going to get through the corner carrying the most speed and traveling the least distance. Um, obviously, there's trade-offs to that. If you carry more speed, you're not going to be able to take the corner as tightly and you're going to have to travel a further distance around that radius to get through the corner without scrubbing that speed off. If you go slower, you can get tighter on the corner, but you're also carrying less speed. So it's always a trade-off. There's always a balancing act at play, um, regardless of how you're taking a corner. So in this example here, we've got this medium apex. This is kind of your standard. Um, you know, for most corners, this is kind of what people have in mind when they're first thinking about the driving line. Um, and then we'll move on here we have a late apex so this you can see here the line comes in a little bit deeper on the entry to the corner and then it cuts sharper right in this region here where the cart's fully loaded up and the attempt is to straighten the exit of the corner so you're coming you can see here the reason it's called the late apex is because you are getting closest to the curbing or the inside of the corner right here late in the corner and this is beneficial for 
in this example here, in this tighter hairpin, this can be beneficial because what it's going to do is it's going to optimize the exit of the corner and the straightaway speed off of that corner. Um, so what you see here is you can actually drive in a little bit deeper because you're not turning in as soon, you're turning in later. So you have a couple extra feet of braking you can get into the corner of straight line braking. Um, and then the trade-off there though is that you do need to initiate a lot of rotation right here in the beginning of the corner. So you're going to have to slow the cart down more, scrub more speed off to get it to get that tighter angle to hit that late apex and roll straighter off the corner. So like I said, this is this is good for um, like a hairpin turn like this that's going to lead onto a straightaway uh, because it's going to sacrifice the entry a little bit, but it's going to optimize the exit and allow you to carry more speed off the corner where you're going to be giving up a little bit of time on the entry and the apex of the corner. And then thirdly, we have an early apex, which is the opposite of a late apex. So you can see what you're doing here is you're turning in earlier and more shallow, and you're getting close to the inside of that corner right here on the uh, beginning of the curb on the early part of the corner. So what this does is it's it's not really used as much because it's kind of um, you know it's not uh, it's not helping you get off the corner so it's a, tends to be a little bit slower there are situations where you're going to want to do it but um, it tends to be a little bit slower because what you're doing is you're coming in to the corner harder you're turning in earlier and then you're scrubbing off all your speed here where you have to rotate the cart really hard on the exit which is you know requiring you to get on the throttle later um, and you have a tendency to run wider at the exit so compared to the late apex you scrub all your speed off in the beginning of the corner, you're on the throttle earlier, and you are on the gas here, so you know you're getting an extra this much space here of on throttle time. In an early apex, you are on the throttle much later, on the exit of the corner, so you're getting less on throttle time. It sounds simple in theory, uh, you know, you're, you're on the gas less, so you're going slower. The trade-off here is you come in on a shallower angle, so you're shortening up the beginning of the corner. So you're actually going to be faster in the beginning of the corner, but you're going to lose time off the corner. Um, and I would say most beginners have a tendency to early apex the corner because what most beginners are thinking is that they're worried about uh, missing the corner completely, shooting, shooting past the turning point, going wide on the corner. So what they have a tendency to do is they have a tendency to look at the the um, inside curbing when they're turning in and they aim right for that. Um, you know, they're not patient enough to wait uh, for the proper turn in point. So they turn in early, they swing out, they carry a bunch of speed in, too much speed in, they scrub it all off on the exit and they're slowed on the straightaway. And this is, like I said, mostly what I see from newer drivers um, is they're just trying to make sure they hit that apex, which is good to have that in your mind, but Unfortunately, if you're not patient enough and you're not, you know, you don't have the technique mastered, you're going to end up apexing it too early and you're going to hurt yourself on the exit here. So those are your three basic apex terminology points that we want to talk about. Um, and now let's go into another aspect of this. So now that we understand that there are three different types of apexes that we can take through a corner and how to optimize a little bit within that one corner, we have to take some other factors into consideration. So to start off, let's just cover a little bit on the basics of how a go-kart works. Um, this is a little bit different than a car where you have suspension and weight or downforce and those kind of things, but it's also different in that you don't have a rear differential in a go-kart. The axle is solid. Um, so when you go around a corner, the rear, the rear wheels are connected, meaning one tire is trying to take a tighter radius, the inside tire, and the outside tire is trying to take a longer radius around that corner. Because those tires cannot spin at different rates because they're connected, if they're both on the ground when you're turning, they're going to scrub speed. Um, and when you do that, you're sapping power and the go-kart is not going to handle correctly. So one of the main considerations that you need to take when you're trying to determine how you're going to apex or take a corner is where the rubber is, where the grippiest part of the track is. Um, and this is kind of a technique that 
me and me and my main driver coach and kind of my karting mentor Jamie Siraki that we kind of came up with probably over a decade ago on a track walk at Dousman. Um, so the backstory there is quickly I had moved up to a faster class I was running uh, the tag class uh, on a leopard engine and my driving style had been adapted from 100 cc carts so stuff that was a little bit different to drive um, on these stickier tires higher horsepower and higher weight I was struggling a little bit more and I never really felt like I had enough front grip in the go-kart we would always be putting more front grip in more front grip in and it just never felt like I had enough front grip in the go-kart well what it turns out is the real problem was my driving um, so what we kind of talked about on this track walk was there is a tendency for some drivers to turn in early like I said earlier uh, newer drivers have a tendency to turn in, turn in early um, and in my case I had a tendency that I was turning in too late so let's look at this first slide here and kind of talk about what that does so you can see here um, we're talking about driving under the rubber that's kind of the main uh, term that we kind of used to describe what you need to do in the corner to get the go-kart to work and I'll explain how that happens um, so you can see here the rubber is the green fade in this corner this is where the carts are laying down rubber from the tires this is where the grippiest part of the track is going to be um, and the idea is you want to be driving in this rubber because obviously that's where the grippiest part of the track is now the reason that you want to be driving in the rubber is because that's where the go-kart is going to work best like I just mentioned the go-kart cannot turn effectively without lifting the inside rear wheel off the ground that's how you get that cart to turn because it does not have a rear differential the tires cannot rotate at the same time or at different speeds so you need to lift the inside rear wheel off the ground well how do you do that there's a couple ways you can do that you can set the go-kart up to do it more or less with some adjustments I'll talk about that in a future video but I'll just break down a little bit what was happening in my case so I had a tendency to turn in too late so what does that have? what does that do so when I drive into the corner here you can see the line my outside tires are getting just above this rubber so that means my outside tires are on the slippier part of the track rather than the grippier part of the track so I'm actually getting less grip out of the out of the track surface which is why it never felt like I had enough front grip so because of that I was turning in late I was having to put a bunch of steering into the go-kart to get it to turn and what that does is it jacks the inside rear wheel up really high because you have a lot of front end geometry the chassis is flexing a lot when you put more steering input in so the cart lifts the inside rear wheel up real high and then it sets it down on the exit and the cart bogs on the exit because you have both wheels scrubbing so what I needed to do was I needed to turn in a little bit earlier and get that cart so the outside tires were in that rubber so I was getting all the grip I needed to get through that corner and helping the cart to rotate effectively so the benefit here is twofold I'm driving in the rubber so I'm on the grippiest part of the track so I have more cornering potential also when you drive in the rubber like this you're getting the cart loaded up at a slower rate you can see here with the late turn in I'm doing all my turning right here at the beginning of the corner I'm asking so much of the go-kart right there in the beginning of the corner that it's gonna load up really hard and then set down you have to think of the frame like a spring so anytime you load it up really hard it's gonna snap back really hard when you drive in the rubber or under the rubber as we say you're driving in slower you're turning in slower so you're loading that spring up slower which means it's less likely to snap and set down or slide um, and you're rotating the cart really nice and smooth all the way through this corner so now we need to look at that in the context of different apex types um, that doesn't mean that you're always going to be driving a medium apex like kind of is shown in this diagram some corners you know everybody's driving a later apex for whatever reason or everyone's driving a earlier apex for one reason and that's naturally where the rubber is going to get laid down 
but the main point is keeping your outside tires in that rubber. That's going to help you rotate more smoothly. The cart is going to be more predictable. It's going to be more balanced, and it's going to be a lot easier to tune when you're driving the corner in the rubber. One of the number one things that I see from people I'm coaching is they're just not driving the racing line like they're supposed to be. They think they are, but they are not driving in the grippy part of the track. They're not driving in the rubber. And because of that, they think the go-kart's handling badly, and they can't figure out why. And the reason is because they are not driving on the grippiest part of the track. So many times I have gone to a track where I've been working for somebody, and they say, oh, the go-kart's pushing, or it's pushing, and then it's loose on the exit. And I say, you're turning in too late. You need to turn in sooner and slower. They do that, and boom. We, you know, we drop half a second out of the lap time, and the car all of a sudden is working like it's supposed to. All the handling issues are gone, because they weren't handling issues. They were driving issues. So that's one thing to keep in mind here, is that you want to be driving in the rubber. That's basically the most important part. Um, like I said, driving in the rubber is going to help the cart rotate smoothly. It's going to keep it balanced and predictable. It's just going to be better all around. It's going to be easier to tune. So here's what happens if you drive in and you drive in too deep and too late, like I was doing initially. So what you're do, like I said, you're ending you're ending up with your outside tires off the grippiest part of the track, which means that you're losing grip initially on turn in. Then you have to put a bunch of steering input into the cart to get it to lift and rotate. And because of that, you're loading that spring up of the frame really aggressively. And then it's going to snap back down, and you're going to get handling issues off the corner. So commonly what you see is you get understeer on entry, oversteer on exit, um, and it kind of feels like you can never get it down into the apex of the corner. It feels like you're kind of always struggling to get it to turn in. Um, and then thirdly, if we look at this, a too early turn in, Again, what you're doing is you're turning in this shallow line here, and you're actually so far under the rubber that you're not, you're not getting the grip either. Um, and what tends to happen is your line on the entry is so shallow that you're never getting that go-kart loaded up, the frame loaded up like that spring. So it never lifts the inside rear wheel, rear wheel tire. And it's, it, just, it won't turn in. Um, so what tends to happen there is it won't turn in, Finally, it starts to turn in on the exit, and at that point, you're already understeering off the corner or you're sliding off the corner, and it feels like you're going to go wide. Um, so, like I said, there's going to be rubber in different spots on all these tracks on every corner, and it's going to be up to you to figure out where that rubber is, where you feel like the cart is getting the most grip. If you go into a corner, especially if you're having different handling issues, between two corners, like say you're oversteering in one corner and understeering in another, more than likely what's happening is you're not on the correct line in one or both of those corners. The cart isn't going to flip-flop balance between two corners. The cart is a constant value when you're out on the track for the most part. The driver is the variable all the time. So on a practice day, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go out there and you're going to want to drive your normal line or whatever and then maybe you want to try to drive in deeper or you want to try to drive in a little bit slower and shallower and kind of find where that happy medium is where you see if you can fix the go-kart's perceived handling issues with your own driving that's what a lot of these really good drivers are able to do is they are able to adapt on the fly lap to lap so even if the cart you know if the tires are going off if they go out and they feel that the tire pressure is wrong or they have the wrong setup on the cart they're able to adapt and kind of alter their driving a little bit, alter their line a little bit to get the cart to work a little bit better. But the most important thing is staying in that rubber, under that rubber. Um, we say under the rubber because the outside tires are the part of the cart that's in the rubber. So the driver technically is like a little bit underneath the line. Um, but yeah, that's where the cart's going to work best. Um, so yeah, keeping that in mind as well as where the apex points are, you know, how you want to attack that corner, um, all super important. Um, another thing to note that I have written here is you want to pay attention to the curbing. So um, I'm sure whether you're just starting out in karting or you have lots of years in karting, you've seen pictures online at some of these tracks of carts just launching themselves over curbs, you know, all four wheels off the ground, and it looks awesome. It's really fun. 
but it's not always the fastest way to get through a corner. So um, what I like to do when I'm going out on a track for the first time is I like to take the warm-up lap um, on my first practice session or the first couple laps, kind of get a feel for where the track goes, and then get some dedicated laps where I'm trying to figure out what curbs I need to hit. Um, so why would you want to hit a curb, and why would you want to send your go-kart sailing through the air or up on two wheels, you ask? Well, because when you hit a curb, you're shortcutting the corner a little bit. So remember, like I said in the beginning, the entire idea of this is to get the go-kart through the corner the shortest distance while carrying the most speed. The shortest distance is definitely going to be to jump straight through the apex if you can. Now, this isn't always going to be possible, and it's kind of a it's kind of a deadly game you're playing here because the curbing on some tracks is just completely unusable you know some curbs are easy to hit some are hard and some are huge and some are low so you know it could really upset the go-kart if you hit a curb either at the wrong angle or if you hit a curb that's too high these are things that can totally upset the cart or even send you off the track if you hit it way too aggressively so like I said, I like to take a couple recon laps during practice and kind of get a good feel for what the track is like, where the line is, and then I like to take a few specific um, recon laps to kind of look at the curbs. It's also a good thing, if you're new to a track, to go down to the fence during practice or whatever and watch some other people and see what they're doing. Um, it's pretty easy to see if somebody's hitting a curb or not. Um, it can be a little bit harder to see from the pits whether somebody is what line they're taking, but you can definitely see if they're jumping over a curb or whatever. Um, but yeah, the curb can help rotate the cart if you hit it right. If it's a good curb and you hit it at the right angle, it can help you know get some air underneath that inside wheel, and it can help rotate the cart around. Um, so that's definitely something worth looking at um, as a little bit more of an advanced technique, and that could also influence how you're going to apex that corner too. Um, if you know the curb is going to help you rotate the cart, you might be able to drive it in a little bit shallower and know that if you hit that curb, it'll rotate it around in the center. Um, you know, if you know you have a big wide curb on the exit, you know you can drive it in a little bit harder and use that runoff on the exit. Um, so those are all things to consider. And then my final slide here that we're going to talk about is about optimizing sections of track. So we talked about, let's jump back here, we talked about optimizing a single corner here. But on all, most tracks, there's going to be at least one section, if not the whole track, where it's a series of corners. And that's really where the different apex points come into play. So you can see my little diagram here. Um, we've got this hairpin followed by a, right away by another tight corner that leads onto a straightaway. So... Um, what does optimizing the section mean rather than the corner? Well, if you're optimizing this hairpin corner, what you prob if, we, if we completely take away this second half here, what you would probably end up doing is making a little bit of a late apex on this hairpin corner um, and using all the track on the exit and swinging out wide. Um, but we have this other corner here right away. So optimizing this is going to require us to carry more speed down the straightaway. What we want to do is we want to set up our initial section here to be carrying as much speed as possible down the straightaway. Obviously, the straightaway is the long part of the track, so anything that you do good here is going to carry all the way down the straightaway. You're going to gain time all the way down the straightaway. If you do something wrong here, you're going to lose time all the way down the straightaway. So this would be, there would be a big penalty or a big chunk of time to gain here if you do this right or wrong. So like I said, if we were doing this without this section, we'd be swinging out wide here, carrying as much speed as possible through this first apex. Well, we can't do that because we have a corner right here. So what do we want to do? What we want to do is come in here and aim for a very late apex on this first hairpin. You can see the apex point is right, would be like right about here, really late in the corner. What that's going to do is it's going to completely compromise our exit for this corner, but it's going to allow us to set up wider for this corner and get a much better run through this longer corner here that leads onto the straightaway. So if you think about this in terms of time gained and lost, yes, you're going to lose time here compared to running this like you, with a normal line. 
you're going to lose time on this exit by chopping it off like that and killing all your momentum. But you're going to gain much, much more time. You're going to gain that time you lost and more by setting up for this final corner, apexing this late, getting a nice smooth wide arc through this corner and using all the track on the exit. Um, like we talked about in that first slide, if you come into a corner and you're scrubbing all your speed on the exit, you're shortening the straightaway basically. So it's going to hurt you all the way down that straightaway. If you come into this corner and you scrub your speed here and get on the throttle earlier, you're going to carry that throttle all the way down the straightaway. Um, so you always want to be optimizing the section rather than just a singular corner. Um, so look at the track map of wherever you're driving. Take a look at what you think you need to do to get through each section. Um, you always want to make sure that you're carrying as much speed as possible onto straightaways because straightaways are the longest part of the track and that's where all that time is going to build up. So that might mean you have to compromise it and exit here or there to get a better entry onto the more important corner. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be how you optimize a section. Um, another point that I have written down here is you kind of want to remember to look for uh, track surface imperfections and stuff like that. Um, in the same vein as looking at the curbing of a corner, you also want to look for bumps, um, cracks in the pavement, um, or other weird things on the track surface maybe that might alter how you have to take that corner. Sometimes you'll find you get to a corner, maybe it's banked, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's got a big crack right at the turn-in point, a big bump, and you can't turn in where you want to turn in. It might be better to sacrifice your line a little bit on that turn-in to avoid that bump so that you, the cart isn't upset all the way through that corner by that bump. Um, so those are other things to walk, watch out for. That's where a track walk can really come in handy and some of those initial recon laps in practice. Um, so let's just jump back and recap this a little bit. Uh, this, this is the basics right here. You've got middle standard apex here. You've got your late apex where you're coming in later, turning tighter at the beginning of the corner, straight lining the exit. You've got your early apex where you're coming in shallow. You're swinging out wide on the exit. When you take those three types of apex into consideration with the section of corners, you can alter how you're taking each corner where you're apexing it in order to optimize your speed onto the straightaway. And finally, always remember that the rubber is king. You want to keep that cart working in the rubber as much as possible. That's where all the grip is, uh, and that's where the cart is going to work the best. Um, there's different ways to make a go-kart work, you know, with different driving styles. We won't really cover that in this specific video, but um, kind of the general golden rule here that if you take nothing else away from this video would be you want to make sure that you're driving in the rubber um, and making sure you're identifying where that is and alter your line accordingly. Um, but other than that, those are kind of the basics on racing line, a little bit of theory on how a go-kart works um, and how to optimize some sections on a track to find a little bit more speed. Um, and maybe this will give you a base to start from. You know, sometimes you go to the track, you have, you feel like you have a general idea of what to do, but maybe you, you know, you get out there and you go, I don't know why I'm a second and a half off the pace. I feel like I'm doing everything right. Well, it's probably something to do with your general racing line. Um, so maybe this will help you analyze that a little bit more and uh, find some extra time out on the track. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email and ask away or reach out to me on social media. I'd be happy to answer anything, any questions you have about driving or chassis setup or things like that. And be sure to check out any other videos we have. This is going to be a, this is going to be a, a longer series. So there will be more videos coming um, on the basics and then some more advanced techniques. But uh, for now, this is all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or cool or interesting in any way, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your karting buddies. And check out the rest of my channel for more cool karting videos just like this.